Thanks very much, Peter, and I hope I can live up to that. Um, so we might just start. Firstly, just to introduce, probably most of you know, but what, what is osteoporosis exactly and what does it mean? Well, it's, it really means that we have um, low bone mass and some deterioration of the bone structure, which results in the bones becoming more fragile and therefore more likely to fracture or to break. And if you look at this picture here on the left, this is normal bone, and you can see a nice sort of geometrical structure. There's, there, this, is sort of, this is the inside of bone. If you look at this side here, you can see that a lot of the bone has worn away, that some of these struts here, that sort of, if you think of it like holding up a, a building, have broken here, and so that if there's any force applied to that bone, it's more likely to break. And that's essentially how we can think of what happens uh, to bones, or what happens to our bones in osteoporosis. Actually, something, here's a slide missing. I don't know quite what's happened here. There is a slide missing, but the missing slide was actually going to show you that um, we start off with uh, bones like this, uh, by the you know the, our bone density increases, so when we have bones like this is as young adults up until about the age of fifty, and then with age, we gradually tend to lose bone, and bone dense, but we we measure bone mass or strength generally using a bone density. Um, which is a, a DEXA machine, and that, that gives us an estimate of how strong the bones are. It's not perfect, but what we do is we start off with relatively good measure of bone strength, and it gradually declines. Uh, and the, with age, our bones start to look more like this, and therefore our risk of fracture increases. And this is from the uh, Dubbo Osteoporosis Epidemiology Study, which is a long-running study that was started by Professor Eisman, who's going to talk later, uh, in 1989. And we've been following the people in Dubbo over the age of 60 and looking at what factors cause them to uh, break bones, what causes their bone density, their bones to become weaker, and what happens after fracture. And what you can see here is a graph of women on the left and men on the right. These bars represent the fracture risk. And in green, you've got hip. Orange are vertebral or spine fractures. And in yellow are non-hip, non-vertebral fractures. So all the other fractures, fractures of the shoulders, the arms, the legs uh, that are not the hip. Now, the first thing to notice is though that a lot of fractures occur in women, fractures also occur in men. So osteoporosis does occur in men. And roughly for about every three fractures, two will occur in women and one in men. Next thing to notice is we've got age going along the x-axis from 60 to 69 years here up to 80 years uh, here. And same with men. And with increasing age, you can see that the fracture risk fracture incidence increases. And you see in green, which are the hip fractures, there's an exponential increase in fractures with increasing age. Similarly in men, although the, the um, rates are not quite as high. And also with spine fractures or vertebral fractures, increasing incidence with age uh, in women and men. What you'll notice for the other group of fractures, the non-hip, non-vertebral fractures that are often ignored, the fractures of the forearm and the other arms, um, upper arm and legs, is that they're high in younger people as well as with increasing age and the same pattern in men. And that's important because these fractures uh, do have significant consequences as well and I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. Now, What we did here, and this is just to show you, we conducted an audit at St Vincent's Hospital last year. We looked at all the patients in the hospital on one day. And what we found was that 25%, a quarter of all the patients, 
had either come in for a fracture or had osteoporosis or a prior fracture. So in, essentially were at high risk of fracture, um, had osteoporosis. That's a quarter of the patients in the hospital. It's the same number who have diabetes. It is not an uncommon uh, problem. And of those, of those people who had osteoporosis or fracture, a third of them actually came in with a fracture. What's also important to notice is that of all those patients, 60% had had a prior fracture. So there'd been some signal that something had been going on. Of those patients, 40% were undiagnosed. And that is really, that's a microcosm of what happens in the general uh, society. Now, if we look at all the people who came in with fractures, and the numbers here are not important, but and, um, you probably won't be able to read what's along the bottom, but essentially these are different types of fractures. So people came into hospital with spine fractures, with hip fractures, with fractures of the pelvis, but they also came into hospital with all these other types of fractures, the, low, up, the rest of the, the um, thigh fractures, wrist and forearm fractures, upper arm fractures, rib fractures, lower leg fractures. So it's not just the hip fractures that are resulting in people coming into hospital. And the other important thing to note is that um, the average length of stay for these people with all these different types of fractures was 28 days a month in hospital. Um, 37 days was the average length spent at rehabilitation. This is not an insignificant problem. Now, if you look at, um, again, don't worry about the numbers, but the light blue bars represent where people were before coming into hospital. And this is um, home. So the majority of people came from home. There were a few people who came from um, low level care, like a hostel. And where did they end up going? The dark blue bars is where they went after they left hospital. Very few went straight back home. The majority went to rehab, but you can also see that some went to hostels, nursing home, respite and hospice care. So this is for a variety of fractures, not just hip fractures. It is not a disease that should be ignored. And of all the at-risk patients, and again, this represents what happens in the community, about two-thirds were women and a third men. And again, about, this is the dark blue bars, represents those who were not on treatment. About two-thirds of people were not on treatment. A third were on treatment. And if you look at that broken up of those who are on treatment, two-thirds are women and a third men. So men have fewer fractures, but they also get recognised less and they tend to get, they're, they're more, they're, no one is well treated, but men are treated even worse than women because it's not recognised. Now, why is it so important? And, I mean, I've shown you what happens to fractures, but this is the other thing, is that we know that after your first fracture, your risk of a second fracture increases quite dramatically. And what we have here, and this is again from the double osteoporosis study, is that we have women uh, in, in pink and men in green. And again, you can see that this is the first fracture. The risk of fracture increases with age. This is risk up along here, and this is age on the x-axis. Men, fewer first fractures than women, but again, the risk increases with age. So this is all fractures put together here. This is the risk of a second fracture for those who've had the first fracture. So for every age group, if you look at the pink bars first for women, the risk of a second fracture doubles, approximately doubles. If you look at men, once they've had their first fracture, their risk of another fracture increases three to fourfold. So for every age group. So once they've had their first fracture, the risk of a second fracture for a man is the same as that of a woman who's already had a first fracture. So a man, for instance, age 60, who's had a first fracture, their risk of a second fracture is about the same as an 80-year-old man. So not only is there a risk of uh, second fracture, we also have found from the double study that there in, in elderly people that fractures cause reduce survival. Now this is a bit of a complicated graph, but I'll just walk you through it. 
this is just for women, but it's this, it's actually worse for men because men die uh, younger than women, as we know. Everyone starts off here alive, and we have time along the x-axis. So you would expect that you know over time you're taking an age somewhere between 60 to 74 that people will, will die, and so that the, the the curve will go down like this. And in white is what happens to the general population. So 100% here alive, by 20 years, about 40% of people have died. So that's normal. In the light blue are what we call minor fractures. So fractures of the hands, the wrist, the foot, the ankle, the lower leg. And that's the same as the general population. In green are hip fractures. So you can see the difference in that there's a very high mortality following hip fractures. And we actually know that about uh, after a hip fracture, about 20% of people at the end of the year have died. Um, and you can see that you know here by 10 years, about 60% of the people have died. But what's important is that also is that in orange and yellow are spine fractures and what we called other major fractures. And they included multiple rib fractures, fractures of the upper arm, pelvis, um, other uh, femur or other um, thigh fractures. And they, not as bad as hip fractures, but they also have reduced survival, significantly reduced survival. But the good news is that there's a lot of medication around, and you're going to hear about this later. And that medication we know from a number of studies can not only decrease your risk of another fracture, but it may also improve survival. This is from the Dubbo study. Um, it's the same sort of graph. Everyone starts off here 100% alive. Um, and in white, again, is the general population. So same sort of thing. People after 10, 15 years, a certain percentage Will, will have um, passed away. In orange are the fractures that have not had people with fractures who've not been treated. And in the green, now the numbers are small, that's why you sort of see big steps here, but essentially in green are the people who were treated, which is pretty much uh, the same or perhaps even better than the people who were not, so then the general population. This has been repeated in a number of um, other studies. Uh, it's not a randomised control study, but there, there was a randomised control study of fractures. So it's certainly, we know that treatment decreases subsequent fracture and may also improve survival. So there's no reason not to be treated if you need to be. So what can we say from this? Osteoporosis and fractures are common. They affect women and men. The risk increases with age, and all fractures, not just hip fractures, are important with significant consequences. Uh, treatment reduces fracture risk and possibly improves survival.